So what we did in the last chapters of exporting flipbooks from Adobe InDesign is we added these nice page textures and we set our graphics to have the multiply transfer mode so that they would blend with their backgrounds. What I want to do in this tutorial is add covers. And you may notice, let's go to this first page, I would need another page here that would be the inside of the back cover. And the problem you see is it shuffled all of my spreads. Everything is now one page off and this becomes a big mess. So I'm going to undo that. I could add single pages and it would work, but I still have an empty spot on top and it will export a spread. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this spread. Let me move this onto your screen so you can see. I'm going to control click on this page. I'm going to turn off allow document pages to shuffle and I'm going to turn off allow selected spread to shuffle. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a plain page here. Notice I can add it either ahead or I can, there's a little bracket, I can add this directly to the previous page. This becomes the inside of the back cover. And now I'm just going to add a plain page before that. And it automatically gave me a spread, which is fine. I'm going to do the same thing in the back. This is my back cover. I'm going to add a plain page. and you'll notice that it's adding spreads so I need to do the same thing let me move this where you can see it because the menu drops down below the screen allow selected spread to shuffle and I should be able to add a plain page if not I'm going to delete this one and there we go so everything now is spreads which prepares me for adding my covers I'm going to hit Command D, Control D on a Mac. Here's my front cover. And I'm going to go ahead and add it here. And this will crop it just a little bit. And then I'm going to go with my, I'm just going to rough this out with my white arrow. Move it over. Here is my back cover, control D, back, and this book has a jacket, it just wraps around. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit to fit. I'm going to put it here, crop this, and now you can see I want this to be centered because I have my logo on the back, so I'm just going to move it over pretty good close enough now I've got front and back covers let me save this and if I export this we still have the blank hanging over pages to do something with but we're going to be able to design on them and use them for something valuable which I'll show you in a moment it's going to take just a second to export this is a now a 234 page book Here we go, and it loads in the browser. Here's my cover, my title page, and I've got something that now looks a lot like the actual book. And if I come back here, I even have, for example, because I used the table of contents feature inside InDesign, I'm able to actually click and I don't have to modify those links. But if you didn't, I'll show you the solution. So my only problem is if I come back to the very beginning, I have this blank page and I have one at the end. Let's do something about that. I'm going to save this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a previous book that I've created. I'm on the back page. I'm going to go ahead and select this material here. Copy. 
and I'm just going to paste that here. And I missed my background. Let's make sure I copy that too. Let's use my correct arrow, the black arrow. Paste that in place. Object, arrange, send it back. And what I have here is text that I would want to modify. For example, this book is called Currents. Thank you for reading, subscribe to my email list, so on and so forth. And um, this is a different book. I'm going to leave that by now, and I'm just going to uh, leave that for now. I'm going to take this material out because I'm just demonstrating. The other thing I've done is I've created some little gradient shadows here. Copy, and I'm just going to paste them out of place and you can see this is just a gradient I've set the transfer mode to multiply and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set this off on the side here and drop it in so that it looks sort of my, like my book is lying on top of this red surface and for this one I think I'm gonna go ahead to my colors and choose a nice deep ocean blue for this. I could go deeper because this is a sea book, not a book about going to Spain to film documentaries about bullfights. So different novel. I'm going to take this copy. I'm going to go back up to this first page. I'm going to paste in place and then just move this over. If I go back to my other book where I've already done the work, I'm going to go to the first page, and I have some similar material. Didn't mean to drag that. One, two. Here's my directions. One, two, three, four. Copy. I'm going to paste those in place. I won't bother to change the name of the book for now. And I've also created that shadow gradient on the side, which I missed, and I'll paste in place. Now I've got my book sitting on top of the background. I've got text here that talks about what the book is about, and my instructions turn pages by dragging their corners, use the table of contents to link directly to each chapter, use the scale slider to make the book fit your screen, drag the scale slider out of the way when you're done. I'll cover those in the next video. Let's save this and see how we're doing with this book. File, export, save, replace and again just to review because I can scale this to 200 percent I've set this to be 144 I can choose a JPEG quality fairly high in this case I don't have too many images in the book and I'm gonna turn off all of these other options I'm gonna hit uh, you'll see I could convert text to outlines or to pixels um, classic text is fine it'll embed my typefaces in the flash movie I'm gonna hit OK And now it's generating the book. Almost finished. And here we go. There's my book, pretty much complete. I'm going to go to the table of contents. I'm going to link directly to the author's note at the end, and then I can just click these corners too, and here's the back of the book. So that's the whole thing. You can see we have some work to do yet as far as integrating it with its background. Um, and also, it's a little bit small, and we need to add the resizing widget, but I'm going to cover those things next.